as I've said, uh, I just got back from uh, my vacation. Uh, I went to Algonquin Park for six days. I did uh, canoe camping in the wilderness. And uh, so I did seven lakes in six days. And uh, also I did six portages going back and, and, and uh, b- back and forth. And, uh, and three weeks ago, I was planning for this trip. And I was telling people that I'm going to bring a kayak and a paddleboard to Algonquin Park. And they told me, you can't bring a kayak and a paddleboard because if you're going to portage, you're going to portage first with your gears, second with your kayak, and then third with your paddleboard. And they told me, you need to rent a canoe. And I said, OK, I'll, I'll check out the rates of the, the, the rental of the canoe. And I saw um, uh, the rates was like $50 per day. And I will be there for six days, so that's $300. I said, that's too much. I said, I'm just going to buy a second-hand beat-up canoe, and uh, I have my budget. It's very low. And uh, so I was looking at Kijiji. Of course, we go to Kijiji. So I went to Kijiji, and I couldn't find a canoe within my budget. But I saw this beautiful canoe, a cedar strip canoe that was being on sale there, and it was really on bargain. And I was doubtful, maybe there's a damage or that. So I asked my friend uh, who built his own Cedar Strip canoe to check it out. So we went to Havelock, uh, Ontario, which is a town uh, after Peterborough. And so we went there, and uh, we, we met with the owner. And the owner is an Anglican, OK? So we met, and then my friend checked the Cedar Strip canoe. And then he told me after that, he said, I made my own Cedar Strip canoe, and I made mistake. This canoe. No mistake. So we kind of talk about, OK, what's the price that I'm going to ask? You know? And uh, uh, so I talked to the owner, uh, and I said, you know, this is way beyond my budget. But I'm going to say a price. Uh, so I set it a little lower, so that if it's lower, then I could bring it up. And uh, so I said, you know, if it's too low, let me know, because I want it to be fair between you and me. right? So I said the price, and, the, and, and, and this uh, owner said, how could I argue with a Catholic priest? It's yours. <laughs> so I got this canoe uh, uh, on a bargain, really. And I really want to thank this uh, owner. So I met up with him uh, yesterday uh, in Maddock, Ontario. And I gave, her a, I gave him a, a red wine as a thanksgiving you know, for giving me a good discount. And then so I went on, with this, on this trip with, with my friend who's uh, from the United Church. And uh, so uh, he was... He was he was, you know, I was celebrating Mass in, this, in, in, in uh, Algonquin Park, and he was there. He was my only audience there, and he was really participating, and he was very receptive uh, to the homily that I'm giving to him. And uh, so, you know, so I, I'm just so happy that I'm able to minister. As a priest, I'm not just called to minister to Catholics. Well, first, that's my first uh, uh, people that I need to minister to, but I'm also called to minister to those who who are part of uh, uh, other Christian denomination, those of other religion, or those who have no religion at all. Because I'm a spiritual father to all of them. They may not realize that, but they're my spiritual children. And that's what the Lord wants. But reading, uh, listening to our gospel today, it doesn't seem that way. You know, Jesus was going out of uh, Galilee and going to... uh, uh, a Gentile territory called Tyre and Sidon. And there was this uh, Kenite woman who pleaded him to heal her daughter who was possessed with demon. Of course, at that time, Jesus was already popular. He was preaching. He was healing. He was delivering people from evil spirits. And at first, Jesus ignored her. Okay? That was the first response of Jesus. Jesus ignored her. And we see here how uh, this woman came and said, Have mercy on me, Lord, son of David. My daughter is tormented by a demon. And then he said, uh, and Jesus did not answer her. And then the, the disciples asked if we could send, send this woman away. And Jesus said, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And it seems that, you know, Jesus was being rude towards this woman. But in fact, it's not. Because Jesus was ministering first to Israel 
who is the collective firstborn child of God. Okay? And be, being the, the, the firstborn child of God, they stand first in line to receive the Messiah, the Messiah, Messianic blessing from Jesus. And, but it is true because Israel is the firstborn. It is through Israel that the other uh, countries or other people will receive this blessing. That's why in our first reading today, uh, it says here in our first reading today, and the foreigners I will bring to my holy mountain and make them joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and their sacrifices will be accepted on my altar, for my house shall be called a house of prayer for all peoples, not just the Jews, not just the Israelites, okay? But it is true Israel that this, the foreigners will be accepted uh, to the temple of God. And uh, so Jesus was not being rude. You know, he was, he, he, he was called to first minister uh, to Israel. But we see here that this woman was a model of faith, okay? This woman was a model of faith. And, and he, instead of being put off from what Jesus did to her, he knelt down. He came and knelt down, okay? He revered Jesus and said, Lord, help me. Three times she said, Lord. She acknowledged Jesus as her Lord and also the Son of God, right? So you see here the great faith of this Canaanite woman, okay? And uh, so Jesus, so after this woman came and knelt before him and asked for his help, this is what Jesus said. It is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs, okay? Yes, Lord, yet even the, and, and you see here, Jesus not again being rude, okay? Because Gentiles, uh, they're considered as house pets, like, uh, like a house pets because as, as, as house dogs, you know, they're, because they're ignorant of God, the, of the God of Israel and his ways, okay? So, so Jesus uh, pertained to non-Jews as, as house dogs. But again, we see here that uh, her, she, she was not affected by her pride. She was not put off by what, what, by what Jesus said. And instead, really, Plato, we see here the Canaanite woman as the model of persistence. He never, she never gave up. You know, it, it, in, scripture, uh, in, in Scripture, in Matthew chapter 7, verse 7, uh, you know, it says, As you know, and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. This Kenite woman is the model of that scripture passage, okay? And we see here also uh, when Jesus said that, you know, uh, it is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs, you know, this is what she said. Yes, Lord, yet even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. We see here the Kenite woman is also a model of profound humility, okay? She did not, like, you know, uh, uh, she, she realized, yes, that she's not a Jew, and, you know, she, she doesn't deserve really the blessing from the Lord. And yet, she was so humble enough, really, you know, to, to, to have faith in Him because she never doubted. She never doubted that God, that Jesus could heal her daughter. And deliver her daughter from, from, uh, from this evil spirit. So we see here that uh, this woman was, uh, 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 that's why Jesus addressed her as woman, great is your faith. Okay? You know, Jesus, you know, uh, he, she, Jesus used this Kenite woman as a model of faith because Jesus was so saddened by the lack of faith of the Jewish people and even his disciples, the lack of faith. Okay? So Jesus is using this Canaanite woman to, uh, to, uh, to, as, as a model of faith. So we're here really to, you know, to evangelize people, you know, of other religions. We can't discount them because usually, you know, some, there are times wherein even those of no religion or of other religion, they're the ones who profess greater faith than for us Catholics. That's why we can't discount them. You know, when, when we go to heaven, we will see that 
uh, we will be surprised. When we go to heaven, we will be surprised who will be there. The people that we think will be there will not be there, and the people we think that will not be there will be there. Okay? And these are the people who, you know, have no religion, who uh, from other denomination or from other religion, they've come to faith in the Lord. You know, and, and they're a model of, 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 of great faith, just like this woman. So let's, let's, let's you know, let's, let's, let's trust, you know, that uh, the Lord could work, even those who are uh, people from, from, uh, who, who, who does not share the same faith with us. Okay? So let's, let's, uh, let's ask for that. Let's ask for that, that we also share the same faith like this Canaanite woman. Thank you.